Hello, good evening. So we're going to start another session and we are on session number two of this last week. So we are in the middle of this week. So um, for today, we are going to work on um, different activities. In this case, we are going to have some exercises in which you are going to put into practice all the information that you know about the topic that we were developing yesterday. Um, and the thing is that yesterday we were talking about statements, positive, negative, and questions uh, with the past of verb to be. In that case, it's was and where. So we are going to um, have a couple of exercises in which you are going to decide the correct answer. And then, uh, we are going to have a new topic that are dates. In this case, it's not dates like uh, the day, the month, and the year. In this case, we're just going to use years. So we are going to learn how to pronounce the years, and we are going to have an exercise in which you are going to pronounce different years that I'm going to uh, show you on the screen. And then, We are going to, I think we are going to work on the platform, but we are going to see what are the activities that we are going to perform today. So in this case, um, yesterday we were talking about the use of was and where in um, the use of this uh, structure for questions and also for negative statements and all of those things. So now we are going to see a little bit of the contractions. You know what are the contractions in reality, but in this case, we're going to make a review uh, of questions and short answers. In that case, we're going to have short answers and also the contractions of those um, those answers, and then we're going to have the exercises. Así que vamos a ver como las contracciones de las respuestas cortas en negativo, que básicamente ya sabemos qué es lo que tenemos que hacer, pero solo vamos a hacer como un eh, pequeño review de las respuestas, eh, de las short answers, y luego vamos a pasar a los ejercicios. So, I'm going to make um, a table in this case in which I'm going to eh, write the question, the short answers, and the contraction of those short answers. So let's begin with that part. So I'm going to insert a table three. Nine of these spaces. Okay, here we have the question. Short answer. But in this case, I'm going to put one in here, short answers two. Because the number two is the contraction of the answer. So I'm going to write all the questions and then I'm going to write the uh, answers. Number one, was I late? Number two, were you sick? Number three, was he surprised? Number four, 
Was she from Italy? Was it a big house? Were we ready? Were you early? Were they passing? So there we have the questions. Was I late? Is to way or yes? Estuve tarde. Uh, were you sick? Estuviste enfermo. Was he surprised? Estuvo sorprendido. Was she from Italy? Eh, era de Italia. Was it a big house? Era una casa grande. Were we ready? Estuvimos listos o estábamos listos. Were you early? Estuviste temprano o llegaste temprano. Podríamos decirlo también. Were they busy? Estuvieron... Eh, Ocupados, and we have the short answers. In this case, remember that we are going to um, to answer with the verb to be. But in this case, we are going to respond the first question with you. Vamos a responder la primera pregunta con el you. Was I late? Because I am asking that question and you are going to respond. You are going to answer the, that question and you are going to say, yes, you were. Así que en ese caso vamos a responder como que si yo les estuviera haciendo la pregunta de was I late? Estuve tarde o llegué tarde. Y la respuesta viene de ustedes hacia mí. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. And the short answer in, the, in this case is negative. No, you weren't. Con la contracción de un solo. Then, were you sick? Yo les estoy preguntando a ustedes. Were you sick? And you are going to answer, yes, I was. And for negative, no, I wasn't. Was he surprised? Yes, he was. Any negative? No, he wasn't. Then, was she from Italy? Yes, she was. And no. She wasn't. What is what was it a big house? Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Were we ready? Yes, we were. Or no. We weren't. Again, in this case, we are going to respond with we. Were you early? Yes, we were. Or no, we weren't. And the last one, I mean, I need the apostrophe. And the last one, were they busy? Yes, they were. And no, they weren't. So here we have the answers uh, for those questions. Aquí tenemos las respuestas, la positiva y la negativa, ya con su contracción. So now we are going to see the exercises because we have complete the information about the statements uh, using was and where. And we have positive, negative question and also short answers. 
So we're going to have some exercises. But let me see. I'm going to write like two parts of a conversation or a short conversation. Van a ser dos partes y ustedes van a tratar de identificar cuáles son las oraciones que le faltan a esa parte. Y ya luego les voy a estar dando yo como las respuestas. Así que vamos a comenzar. With that part. Vamos a comenzar primero con las short uh, conversations and then we're going to see some, some other uh, statements. So, in this case, we have Mark and Steve. So, in the first one, we have Mark and it says, was Mary at the gym? And in this case, we can answer with positive or negative statements. Then we have Katie and Amanda. And we have Amanda. Where were you? Where were you? So in that case, para estas oraciones vamos a tener que eh, pensar un poco en, en la situación que está sucediendo en ese momento y pensar eh, qué le podríamos preguntar o qué le podríamos decir a alguien en esa situación. En la primera tenemos la pregunta, was Mary at the gym? Y para eso sí tenemos como dos respuestas, yes or no. Pero para la segunda, where were you? ¿Dónde estabas o dónde estuviste? ¿Qué tuvo que haberle dicho a Katie para que Amanda respondiera de esa manera? O sea, haciéndole una pregunta. Then we have Jason and Mark. And we have here Mark. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. I was alone on a tour. I was alone on a tour. Then we have Eva and Kay. And we have Eva asking a question. Was Yuki's, was Yuki's brother Here yesterday. Then we have, yes, in this case, we have just these ones. So for the first one, was Mary at the gym? We have two different options. What are the two different options that we have? ¿Cuáles son las dos opciones que tenemos para esa pregunta? Was Mary at the gym? Está preguntando que si fue al, al gym. Uh -huh. ¿Y la vamos a contestar en negativo o en positivo? ¿Cualquiera de las dos? Cualquiera de las dos en este caso. Entonces podría ser yes. I was. In this case, it's she, porque estamos preguntando por Mary. Okay. Mm -hmm. ¿Por? ¿Por? Porque estamos preguntando por Mary, por ella. Ah, ok, no había entendido eso. Ok, gracias. She, I mean, yes. Entonces sería, yes, she was. Exacto, yes, she was. Y tenemos la otra opción, no, she wasn't. En ese caso tenemos dos opciones para esa pregunta. 
Then, in this case, where were you? ¿Dónde estuviste? ¿Qué puede haber dicho Katie para que Amanda le preguntara eso? Aquí podemos tratar de, de crear una oración. I mean, oh my God. I was not sharing the screen and you are not telling me. Oh my God, so sorry. I was thinking that I shared the screen with you, but at this moment I wasn't. So, here we have the uh, the exercise so in this case what do you think it is the situation that is happening in this uh, second part of the conversation No, she wasn't. Mm -hmm. in, in that case, uh, she wasn't at home. Um, and maybe Amanda didn't know that she wasn't at home. What is another uh, sentence that uh, Katie can use? In this case, we can see it this way. Katie is explaining que ella no estaba en casa. So, ¿Cómo podemos decir esa oración nosotros en inglés? Lo siento, no estaba en casa. Um, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't, I wasn't at home. Ah. I wasn't at home. Muy bien. Sorry, I wasn't at home. No, estu no estuve en casa. Y por eso le pregunta, where were you? ¿Dónde estuviste? Now, in the, in the third one, Jason. Y Mark responde, no, I wasn't. I was alone on a tour. Si le responde, no, I wasn't. I was alone on a tour. Yo estuve solo en un tour. ¿Qué le pudo haber preguntado Jason? ¿Cuál creen ustedes que es la pregunta? Por ejemplo, ¿cómo traducimos? ¿Estuviste con tus amigos o fuiste con tus amigos? Where you, where you, where you going? Want to train? Where you, we're going to take out going. No vamos a utilizar el going. Were you with who? Con quién? Friends. Your friends. Your friends. Mm -hmm. Good. Were you with your friends? ¿Estuviste con tus amigos? No, I wasn't. No, no estuve. I was alone on a tour. Estuve yo solo. Y tenemos la siguiente. Was Yuki's brother here yesterday? Estuvo el hermano de Yuki aquí ayer. Y tenemos dos posibles respuestas. ¿Cuáles son esas dos posibles respuestas? Yes, he was. Or yes, he wasn't. Yes, he was. Or no. He wasn't. He was. Mm -hmm. Very good.
Now I'm going to write um, a postcard. Uh, es como una, es una tarjeta postal. Um, y voy a dejar espacios donde ustedes van a ir viendo cuáles son las eh, opciones correctas para, eh, para completar esa postcard. So, siempre, en este caso sí, vamos a utilizar el presente o el pasado. Voy a dejarles esas dos opciones, present and past. Y van a ver ustedes cuáles son los elementos que le faltan. Van a ir haciendo ustedes um, like, um, we can say like, you are going to see the context of the phrase in which you are going to apply the present or the past. En este caso sí vamos a ver el contexto, vamos a analizar el contexto de la postcard y vamos a ver en cuáles vamos a utilizar presente y en cuáles vamos a utilizar pasado. Para esto voy a escribir Um, las líneas y les voy a dar tiempo para que lo lean, lo analicen y decidan cuál es el tiempo o la frase o la palabra que van a utilizar. So, let's go and I have the exercise. Number two. And this one is complete the postcard. So there we have the uh, postcard in this case. And we have uh, Melissa who is writing the postcard to Sonia. She is like, 
uh, telling her all the things that she is doing with Harry in Mexico City. So we begin the postcard saying, Dear Sonia, Harry and I on vacation here in Mexico. It's a beautiful country and the people very friendly. Last week, we in Veracruz, our hotel, great and Harry, very happy with the food. The weather, sunny and warm, and the beaches, wonderful. Now we in Mexico City, the museum and theaters, interesting. We happy here. See you soon, Melissa. Así que vamos a completar eh, esa postcard con el, el tiempo eh, necesario en el presente o en el pasado utilizando el verbo to be. Y les voy a dar un par de minutos, yo creería que cuatro minutos para que lo lean, lo analicen y vean cuál es el tiempo que necesitan para resolver esas, eh, esos espacios. Y ya vamos a poner ahí las respuestas. So, you have four minutes right now to complete the exercise and then we're going to check your answers. Así que tienen tiempo para pensar en sus respuestas y ya vamos a ver un poquito más adelante cuáles son, las vamos a anotar y vamos a ver si es correctas. So, let's go. Una pregunta was singular, ¿verdad? Where plural. Exactamente. Gracias. Solo que en el caso del I, del yo, se utiliza el was. Y el you, singular, utiliza el where. Bueno, gracias. You're welcome.
let's see, let's see, let's see. Vamos a ver cuáles son esas respuestas. For the first part, Harry and I. ¿Cuál es la eh, forma correcta del verbo be? Was. Are. O, oh, o, oh, o. Oh. Harry and Where? I. Are. Are. Where? Estamos hablando en este oh. caso. En este are caso estamos back. hablando de presente. Estamos presente. de vacaciones en México. Harry and I wow. are okay. on vacation here in Mexico. It, recuerden, presente. It, it, is, it is, is a beautiful country and is. the people are is, very friendly. Are very friendly. Good. Um, are very friendly. Porque estamos utilizando plural. People. Muchas personas. Are very friendly. Ahora, last week, pasado. Last week, we... Where? We were. Good. In Veracruz. Where? Yes, we were in Veracruz. Our hotel... That's great. Was... Was great. Was great. Yes. Was great. And Harry... Was very happy. Happy. Was very happy. Was very yes. happy. Was, was very happy with the food. Was the weather. Estamos siempre pasado. The weather uh, was was was, was sunny. sunny and warm. In the beaches, warm. plural. Where were, were wonderful. Good. Volvemos a presente. Now we. Now. We are. Where? We are. We are. We are in Mexico City. The museum and theaters. Plural. Are. Are. Are interesting. Are interesting. Are. Good. Are interesting. Good. And the last one. We. We, we are. are. We are we happy are. here. We are happy here. Good. Entonces ya tenemos completo el, el postcard. Dear Sonia, querida Sonia, Harry and I are on vacation here in Mexico. Harry y yo estamos de vacaciones aquí en México. It is a beautiful country and the people are very friendly. Es un país muy bonito y las personas son muy amigables. Last week we were in Veracruz. La semana pasada estuvimos en Veracruz. Our hotel was great. Nuestro hotel fue bueno, muy bueno, maravilloso, increíble. Depending on the context. And Harry was very happy with the food. Y Harry estuvo muy feliz con la comida. The weather was sunny and warm. El clima fue soleado y tibio. And the beaches were wonderful. Y las playas fueron maravillosas. Now we are in Mexico City. Ahora estamos en la Ciudad de México. The museum and theaters are interesting. Los museos y teatros son muy interesantes. We are happy here. Estamos eh, muy felices aquí. See you soon, Melissa. Te veo pronto, Melissa. So, that was the exercise. Now, we are going to change the topic. Vamos a cambiar el tema porque vamos a dejar atrás la estructura del verbo to be, present or past. Y vamos a hablar de los años. That is the next topic. Years. In this case, I know that you have a, like information about the years. You know how to pronounce different years. So this is just a review because what is um, the way to pronounce the years? ¿Cuál es la manera de pronunciar los años? De par en par. Exactamente. Los hacemos de dos en dos. Very good. So, years are normally divided into two parts. The first two digits and the last two digits. Los dividimos en los primeros dos dígitos y en los últimos dos dígitos. So, let's see some information about the pronunciation of the years. Normally divided into two 
two parts. The first two digits and the last two digits. And we have the example 9084, that is this year, 9084. And it says that it is divided into 19 and 84. So you will say 1984. So that's why that we need to master the topic uh, or the information about the numbers because you are going to use the numbers to say some uh, dates, to say some years, to talk about money and a lot of things. So you need to be very, very familiar with the numbers. Por eso es que siempre tenemos que seguir eh, estudiando los números porque lo vamos a utilizar para diferentes situaciones. En este caso, pues estamos hablando de los años, así que vamos a necesitar los números para los años. Now we have some examples more. We have the following years. We have this one, we have the next one, and this one. Now, for the first year, this one, how can you pronounce that uh, number? ¿Cómo se pronuncia ese año? Ten sixty six. Ten sixty six. Good. Ten sixty six. Good. The second one. What is the pronunciation? Sixteen. Sixteen. Sixteen fifty two. Good. Sixteen. Fifty two. I mean, 52. 52. Good. This one. 1941. Good. We have 19. Forty. Hi. 41. Oh my God. Yes. And the last one. Ten seventeen. In this case, we're going to see another thing with the, the years after the 2000, but we're going to see. In this case, 20. we're going to say 20. 20, 20, mm -hmm. 20, 20, 20 2017. But you know that there are a different uh, uh, way to pronounce these years. En este caso, también hay otra forma de eh, pronunciar estos años que van después del 2000. Pero ya vamos a ver un poco sobre eso. And we have this situation. How to say the years after this one. Después de este, ¿cómo vamos a pronunciar nosotros los números? Porque si ustedes se fijan, no es muy común que digamos 2017 o 2018, 2019. Tenemos otra forma también de pronunciarlos. And is, in this case, it says for the year 2000, you say the year 2000. En ese caso decimos el año 2000, the year 2000. No decimos 2000. Or, uh, the, or 2017, the year 
2017. For the year 2000, you say the year 2000. For the year 2001 to 2010, the most common way of saying the year is 2000 and the number, the, the, the thing that I was saying. In this case, when you have the 2000 and numbers from one to 10, it is very common to use 2001, 2002, 2003, and 2010. Así que es bastante común que nosotros utilicemos el 2000 en, y el año que estamos utilizando desde el 2001 hasta el 2010. Por ejemplo, I have here this one, and that is this one that is pronounced 2001, 2001, 2001. Then we have this one that is 2005. 2005 and then we have the other year that this one is 2008 but in, in some cases we say 2008 2005 and 2001 but also we can say 2001 2005 and 2008 Eight. For the first year after 2010, you may hear two different alternatives. Para los años que siguen después del 2010, podemos tener dos alternativas. So in this case, it's the same information. Uh, some people say 2012, and other people say 2012. Las dos opciones son el decir 2012, eh, 2012, o decir 2012, 2012. So those are the options. Una pregunta. ¿Esta okay. es para decir los años? Yes. ¿Y para decir una cantidad de dinero? En ese caso, ahí sí tiene, no tiene que dividirlo. En la cantidad tiene que decirla completa. Por ejemplo, si tiene 100 dólares, usted va a decir 100. O si tiene 150, va a decir 115. No va a decir eh, 150, porque ahí sería una cantidad diferente. Sería como eh, 1 dólar en 50 cents. Ahí sí, pero las cantidades tienen que ser completas. En cambio, para los años sí lo no podemos es. dividir de dos en dos e igual con los números de teléfono, como ya lo veíamos, eso se dicen de uno en uno. Pero las cantidades sí tienen que ser completas porque podemos equivocarnos a, a la hora de dar una cifra y vaya a ser que, que demos una cantidad que no es. Supongamos 3.500 dólares sería 3 millones de Si son tres mil... Tres mil quinientos dólares. Ajá. Pero en este caso... Three millions. Three... No, porque ahí son... Three... Three thousand. 
en ese caso sí sería. ¿Y 500 mil? En ese caso, como son... Eh, 500 son 5 mil. 5,000. No, 500 mil. Ah, 500 mil. En ese caso, para decir sí. 500 mil, porque, en, bueno, mmm, no, lo, no lo vamos a, a dividir en... en como en, en diferentes cantidades, no lo podemos dividir en dos, en dos cantidades, sino que vamos a decir 500, porque es, es, son sin, lo podemos decir como 500, 500,000, 500, okay. 500,000, 500,000. 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, para 500 y 1000 es para 1000. Entonces ahí es 500 mil. 500,000. Sí. Bueno, gracias. You're welcome. So, in this case, we were saying that we have the two different uh, ways to say the years. And we have the second one, 2012. Y ahí tenemos ya las dos opciones. Y las dos son correctas. No es como que, ay, si uso una va a ser eh, menos eh, usada que la otra. Ahí es dependiendo de cómo nosotros nos sintamos a la hora de decir los años. No es como que exactamente yo tengo que decir 2012 o yo tengo que decir 2012. Yo puedo usar cualquiera de las dos y son aceptadas. Then, years from the first decade of each century. Las décadas en este caso. Years for, from the first decade of each century. And in this case, when a year ends in a number between 0, 1 and 0, 9, for example, 1705, como sería 1705, lo digo así para que vayamos viendo lo de las fechas, 1705, then that last part is pronounced as the name of the letter O plus the number. Por eso es que se dice 17, O, como la letra O, O, 5. Siempre lo vamos a decir así cuando llevemos números del 01 al 09. O, 1, O, 2, O, 3, O, 4, O, 5, O, 6, O, 7, O, 8, O, 9. When a year ends in a number between zero one, or in this case, O one and O nine, for example, seventeen O five. Then the last part is pronounced as the name of the letter. O plus the number. And we have the examples. We have this one that is 1508. 15 O. I'm going to make it capital. O8. Then we have another one that is 1709. 1709. And the last one. 
1901. 1901. When a year's end in zero, zero, like in, in this case, we can say like different years that end in zero, zero, then the year is said as the digits before zero, zero, and then hundred. In este caso, cuando tenemos años que terminan en cero, cero, Vamos a decir el número que está antes de los ceros y le vamos a poner eh, 100. Ahí no le vamos a decir, eh, por ejemplo, 1600, sino que vamos a decir 1600, por ejemplo. So we are going to see some examples. We have three examples and we have this one that is pronounced 1300. 1300. Then the second one, 17. Hundred and the last one, eighteen hundred. When people refers to an entire century, an S is up to the end. The fifteen hundreds. Los mil quinientos, es como decir los mil quinientos. And also we can say 16th, we can say 16th century and 19th century. Del siglo XIX, el siglo XVI. So those are the pronunciation or the specification of the years that we have here. So in this case, Let's make like a short review of the years. So we have different parts that we need to keep in mind. In some cases, we can divide the years into different digits. Podemos dividir los años en dígitos, los dos primeros con los dos últimos. Luego, para los años que van del 2000, lo podemos decir um, 2000 and one, 2005, 2008. Y para los años que ya van después del 2012, eh, sí lo podemos decir de dos diferentes maneras. 2012 o 2012, los que ya pasan del 2010. Y luego para los years from the first decade of each century, que terminan en 01 al 09, la última parte es pronunciada o más el número. Y para los años que llevan 00, pues eh, en ese caso se omite eh, la pronunciación de los dos ceros y se le agrega 100. Y tenemos 1300, 1700, 1800. Y esa es la eh, información que tenemos sobre los años. Now, we are going to do the last practice in this case because we have four minutes. Mm, no, let's see. I'm going to uh, write the exercise that we're going to um, practice on the next class because we have a couple of minutes. Les voy a escribir nada más los números 
que vamos a utilizar para la práctica. Se los voy a dejar ahí para que ustedes los vayan practicando la pronunciación y eso, para que el jueves uh, los, uh, los practiquemos, digamos, los números o los años in English, um, despite of the numbers that I'm going to write on the chart. Así que le voy a escribir un pequeño cuadro con algunos años y el jueves los vamos a practicar y también vamos a tener el knowledge check y vamos a entrar al siguiente tema que sería WH questions with did, was, were, and also we are going to have um, a vocabulary. So I'm going to insert the table and we're going to have two, seven, like this. So you're going to see the years right now, but we are going to practice on the next class. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller because we have just years. I mean, we have the following years but I'm not saying the name because you need to practice the names. We have a year in the future, so don't feel scared. This is just the practice. So those are the years that we are going to practice uh, the next the next um the next session. So we are going to have just two more days and we are going to end the, the module. And I was saying that. Uh, on the last day, on Friday, we are going to work on the final exam. For the ones that uh, didn't finish that part, we are going to work on that exam the next Friday. Así que para el día viernes, para los que no han completado la sección 5, vamos a estar trabajando también con el final exam. Vamos a estar haciendo un review del examen final para los que no han podido completar o hayan tenido algún problema para completarlo, lo vamos a completar ese día, que sería el último de la, del módulo. Recuerden que el día de mañana no tenemos sesión, no tenemos la clase, because um, it is a special day. Es asueto, así que no vamos a tener la, sex, la sesión, así que nos vamos a ver hasta el día jueves. El día jueves volvemos con la sesión número 3 and then we're going to have a session number 4 on Friday. That is the last day of the course. So it's time to end the session. Remember that we have the numbers there on the document and you need to practice them because we are going to say the names on the next session. So. Now it's time to say goodbye and um, have a really good night and see you on Thursday. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.